your familiarization flight in the F-15C Eagle. The legendary Eagle is one of the world's most successful fighter aircraft with unmatched wing class air combat record. To pause the mission at any time, press the pause key. The Eagle is an all-weather day-night air superiority fighter that is powered by twin Pratt & Whitney PW220 afterburning turbofan engines, each rated at 23,830 pounds of static thrust. This bird is capable of reaching speeds in excess of Mach 2.5 with a service ceiling of over 60,000 feet. In this lesson, you'll learn about the heads-up display, the front panel gauges, and how to navigate. Starting with the HUD, you see that it's quite similar to the HUD of the A-10, so we'll go over the basics pretty quickly. In the center of the HUD is the velocity vector in the pitch lighter. On the left side is the airspeed scale, and on the right side is the altitude scale. The heading tape is along the top of the HUD with a small inverted carrot indicating your current magnetic heading in relation to the scale. This is where the similarities end, though. In the center of the HUD is a W-shaped waterline symbol that represents the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. This indicates where the nose is pointed. The distance between the water line and the velocity vector is the aircraft's angle of attack. Above the water line, but below the heading scales to gun cross, which is positioned two degrees below the water line, it will appear when the weapons are active. Below the airspeed scale is G indication, and below the altitude scale is a navigation data block that displays information regarding your steer point and navigation mode. Now we'll move down to the instrument panel. Five basic instruments are required to keep the blue side up when you can't see anything out the canopy. These five instruments are the ADI, the HSI, altimeter, airspeed indicator, and the vertical velocity indicator. Because these are the same as reviewed in the A-10, I'll not repeat myself here. An additional instrument on the panel is the angle of attack indicator that displays the current angle of attack in units from zero to 45. An index mark is set at the critical angle attack of 22 units. Below this is the accelerometer, or G-meter. Next are the engine tachometers that indicate engine power as a percentage of maximum RPM. The red band indicates use of afterburner. Below the engine RPM gauges are the engine temperature gauges that indicate turbine inlet temperatures in increments of 100 degrees Celsius. The red band indicates the over-temperature zone. Continuing down the panel are the fuel flow gauges that measure fuel flow to the engines in pounds of fuel per hour. Note that the use of afterburner can radically increase fuel flow. Next are the exhaust nozzle position indicators that show how open or closed the engine exhaust cans are. These gauges show the position as a percentage of being completely open at 100. To the right of the engine instruments is the fuel quantity indicator that displays remaining fuel in the internal and external fuel tanks. Fuel is measured in thousands of pounds. Let's now take a look at the navigation data displayed on the HUD. On the navigation data block, the data is formatted into three lines. The first line shows the waypoint number acting as the steer point in the operating mode. You can cycle the waypoints by pressing the tilde key. The second line shows the distance in nautical miles to the steer point. The bottom line indicates the estimated time remaining to reach the steer point. Also on the HUD, we have the Integrated Flight Director Cross. This provides you with a pitch and roll steering guidance to place you on the course track line. To use this, simply maneuver the aircraft to keep the cross centered on the HUD. This concludes this lesson. You can now press the escape key to take control and practice navigation using the loaded flight plan.